Hey guys, today's video is a follow-up from my last video where I compared the William Optics Z61 and the William Optics Star Z73. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put the link in the description, so check it out. But today I'm going to be talking about back focus. I couldn't talk about those refractors without talking about this subject. Because I know when I first started astrophotography and I was trying to figure out what the proper backspacing was on each of these telescopes, and looking at the diagram that, you know, William Optics sends with those <laughs> refractors so that you can figure it out. I don't know if you checked it out, but I was confused as heck. So I'm going to be, number one, explaining that diagram so you can understand it. Also, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, set the back focus with a Astrocam and also with a DSLR, standard DSLR. And one thing to note is that William Optics assumes that you're going to be using a standard camera back focus of 55 millimeters. The good news is that most cameras out today will have that standard back focus of 55 millimeters. But if you have a mirrorless camera, you're going to want to use the adapter that allows you to use the old style lenses so you can keep that 55 millimeters of back focus there. So with that, let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about this diagram. Normally, back focus is measured from the last lens element of your telescope. In our case, it's the last element of the field flattener. William Optics did notate this in this diagram as B, and they're saying for the Z61 measured from the last element of the field flattener, you would need a back focus of 69.2 for the Z61, and for the Z73, it'd be 67.7. The A you see in this diagram is the measurement from the flange. William Optics was just nice enough to include what the back focus would be at the flange with this field flattener at zero position. Today we're going to be using the measurements at the flange with William Optics suggested adjustments since this will be easier to understand. All right, well here is the William Optics Field Flattener. This is the Flat 61, and it's actually the same configuration as the Z73 Field Flattener. First off, you're just gonna wanna remove the bottom piece by unscrewing it, and you're going to be uncovering kind of these tick marks there, and those tick marks are in millimeters. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is move that bottom ring up. For the Z61, you're going to do a back focus of 12.9, so you're going to move that ring to 12.9. And then after it's set there, you're going to want to screw in the bottom piece to lock it down. If you have a Z73, you're going to want to adjust it to 11.4. After that, just unscrew the one and a quarter inch eyepiece adapter. Then grab your flattener and install it on the end of the telescope. First thing I'm going to show you is how to install it with the DSLR. So you're going to need a T-ring adapter and you're just going to put it on the end of the field flattener. Just install it like a regular lens on your DSLR and congratulations on the Z61 you've achieved a back focus of 67.9 and on the Z73 that would be 66.4. Installing an astro cam on the end of that is even simpler. Most astro cameras will have all the rings necessary to reach a back focus of 55 millimeters. Just install all the rings that came with it in the box and you got 55 millimeters. All you gotta do now is just screw it on the end of the field flattener. And there you go. You have the same back focus that you had with your DSLR. Now perhaps you're wondering why William Optics would suggest a 12.9 millimeter adjustment for the Z61 and 11.4 millimeter adjustment for the Z73 if it brings the total back focus to a deviated amount of 0.2 millimeters. After all, the instructions called for 67.7 for the Z61 and 66.2 for the Z73, not 67.9 for the Z61 and 66.4 for the Z73. My educated guess is William Optics already figured that you would be using a filter with the Zenith Star series telescopes. That 0.2 millimeter difference would cover the average thickness of any filter that you would use with this telescope. Furthermore, if you weren't going to use a filter, it would still be close enough to spec where you would get 
nice sharp images out of this telescope. And remember, when you use additional accessories like a filter wheel, a OAG, or a filter drawer, make sure the length of these accessories installed adds up to the total back focus required by what scope you use. By now, you guys should have a basic understanding of how to adjust your Zenith Star Telescope to its particular needs. Looks like Professor Taco joined me here for a second. If this, uh, this video helped you out in some way, let me know down in the comments. And I guess we'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.